welcome back to the Balanced Bully Podcast for ambitious women in business and a few brave men. Hello, everyone. This is the Luminaries edition of the show, which means we have someone exciting, outstanding, inspiring, influential, who is here to ignite a better tomorrow while being courageous in their work that they implement every single day. That is what the Luminary Edition is about. It is why we have it as a special feature, and it is extra why I'm bringing you fantastical, magical humans, men and women alike, who are just literally worthy of extra illumination. I'm your host, Nikita Rinzigten, known as the number one balance and relationship advisor in the world. For those of you who are brand new to the show, I want you to all hear that this is definitely a podcast you want headphones in all the time because I am a sexologist, a relationship expert, blending evidence-based psychotherapy practices with modern coaching techniques, helping exhausted power couples who are amazing, incredible people and really just tired of mediocrity in every area of their lives. They find themselves sacrificing their relationships because they are consumed with the wild success that they are experiencing in business that can sometimes make their bedroom not so wild. So a lot of what you'll hear me talk about on this show is all about work life and love in every area from burnout and imposter syndrome and how it shows up from the bedroom to the boardroom and everything in between. So buckle up and get ready because I am bringing you Miss Cat Kim. Let me just say with love and energy and excitement, let it flow through you now. This woman is absolutely breathtaking visually and outstanding in her journey of all that she has accomplished. I'm going to try not to tell too much of her story right now in this moment, but I have to say that I am super deeply connected to her, like literally in a spiritual womb, which makes sense because she is a spiritual teacher, a leadership coach, and founder of the School of Divine Confidence. Kat Kim, welcome to the Balanced Bowley Show. How are you today? My cheeks are hurting right now from smiling so much. Oh my God. (laughs) You had me beaming from the moment that you opened your mouth. I'm like, oh, this this is amazing. (laughs) Thank you. It's so good to be here finally. Yay. I am super excited. You have such an incredibly layered journey that I would be remiss if I tried even a syllable of trying to share it through an introduction of sorts. So I would love for you to tell everyone just a little bit of where you were and how it led you to the path you're in right now. Sure. Well, my journey began, I think, when I was six years old. At six years old, my mother began feeding me diet pills. Mm -hmm. And I was not old enough to know what was going on. I didn't know whether it was right or wrong. I remember one day, though, just barely being able to put my hands on top of the kitchen counter. And I had my hands up there and I was looking up at my mom and she was at the cutting board in the kitchen. She was cutting something. And I said, what are you doing? She's like, well, these are diet pills and you're only a child and these diet pills are for adults. So you only need half of them. Uh And I just accepted in that moment without any judgment, without any questioning that there was something wrong about my body and that it needed to be fixed. Uh And I needed something outside of me in order to fix that thing that was inside of me. Yeah. So that was pretty much the beginning of a lifelong struggle of low self-confidence, bad body image, no self-worth. Um, I felt ugly, fat, and unwanted all by the time I was in second grade. Yeah. You know? And I also grew up in a very emotionally and physically abusive environment. Mm-hmm. And so I started rebelling at a really young age. Um, at 13, I started smoking and doing drugs. By mm-hmm. 16, I was doing hardcore drugs. By 18, I was transporting i was dealing drugs i was dealing cocaine Uh i was transporting it from washington state to california on the plane (laughs) wow talk about bold (laughs) yeah uh, seriously um it was pre 9 11 Mm -hmm. i can't even like secretly girl it was too easy right (laughs) 
it was too easy. And I actually put it, this is a secret. You can't do it now. Anyone who's listening, don't do what I did. <laughs> but I would put the cocaine inside of maxi pads. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just stuffed it in there. Mm-hmm. Nobody thought to question me. Right. Um, one day I did get caught. I was in Oakland, California, of all places. I was handcuffed. Um, something that's really trippy is having your Miranda rights read to you. You always hear it on TV. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everywhere since you're born, you know, you that, that moment when the cool cops catch the the mm-hmm. bad guy and it's like, you you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say or do can be used you against you in a court of law. But to hear that in real life exactly. <laughs> is a trip. That mm-hmm. was the trippiest part of I mean, there's many trippy parts about my the story, but that was that was a moment I remember and I thought, mm-hmm. what's going on here? <laughs> So um, I was handcuffed, put behind bars in Oakland, California, of all places at that time. Oakland was notorious for its high rates of homicides and violent crime. Yeah. And I was in the middle of all of that. Mm-hmm. And talk about not having fear. I was absolutely fearless. But it wasn't the type of fearlessness that came from courage. Right. The word of courage is car, which is the heart. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that type of fearlessness. It was a type of fearlessness that came from having absolutely no regard for my life, my future, my body, my health, anything. Mm-hmm. I did not care what happened to me. I had no confidence. I had no self-worth. Yeah. You would think that was my wake-up call, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Even while I was in jail, I was like, this is Oakland. I'm going to network while I'm here. (laughs) Talk about entrepreneurial spirit in the midst. (laughs) I'm going to try to make some drug deals while Mm -hmm. I'm here. It's literally Mm -hmm. what I did. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, suddenly I'm there facing three years in state prison. I was caught red-handed and there's a whole other story. Maybe we'll do another podcast episode. I'm down. (laughs) There's some stories between, there's like stories within the stories. Um, but ultimately I pled guilty. Mm-hmm. Um, and as part of my, um, you know, my court case, I had to go to rehab, um, for two years, which I did. I went to Narcotics Anonymous. I had to do the U- the urine analysis every week. Um, I, ha- I went through the whole nine yards and I cleaned up the drugs. Okay. But this feeling of being ugly mm-hmm. unworthy, and unwanted, that yep. can go nowhere. Mm-hmm. That was something I accepted about myself since I was a six-year-old girl, mm-hmm. and that stuck with me. So even though I cleaned up the drugs, that belief about myself manifested in other ways. Absolutely. In other ways in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, the entire time throughout my adulthood life, and as a child and a teenager, I walked around like I was the ugliest, meanest bitch in town. Mm. I never took care of myself. And because of this, I attracted everything into my life that validated those beliefs to be true. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So even though I cleaned up the drugs, I got out of jail. Years later, I was um, got involved in really, really toxic relationships with men, Um, emotionally abusive men. You know, I was just repeating my my childhood Mm -hmm. really with my parents. And it wasn't until one day um, at this, you know, I was at that time absolutely totally depressed i couldn't even move out of i couldn't move my body i remember one day just i wasn't i wasn't in bed i was on my couch it was where i would stay mostly mm-hmm. all day i remember trying to get up but my 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 arms and my entire body was being pushed down by some something i don't even know what it was but i couldn't even lift myself up from the couch um that's how depressed i was at that yeah. time mm-hmm. i was in an emotionally abusive relationship and Somehow I got myself up and I was going somewhere. I don't even remember where, but I was walking down my apartment hallway and to the elevator door. And there's this really big mirror that hung on the wall from um, floor to ceiling, Mm -hmm. um, ceiling to floor. (laughs) And I remember walking down the hallway and I looked up, I glanced up and I saw somebody um, in the mirror. She was, you know, a, a reflection of her in the mirror. And I looked up at her and she was, she was like, she was really um, unkept. Her hair was kind of all messy. She was wearing big baggy clothes and her face was really, really swollen. It was red and puffy. And mm. more than how she looked, there was this really dark, deep em- energy that was emanating from her. And 
even in that moment while I was wallowing in my own toxicity and depression, I remember looking at her and just thinking, oh, at least I'm not that bad. Mm. You know, it just wow. hit me and I was like, wow, at least I'm, I haven't gotten to that point. Mm-hmm. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks to them. There was nobody else in the hallway. Right. It was just me. I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. Yeah. But I had become so disconnected from the woman that I wanted to be and the person that I was being that I didn't even recognize myself when I saw myself in the mirror. That was the moment. Yeah. That was my wake up call. Mm. And it's just a little bit over dramatic, but this is literally how it happened. I walked into the elevator and as the door is closing now, now remember the mirror is like right across from me now. So right. I can see myself and the elevator door is closing in on me. And mm-hmm. I'm like looking at myself and the elevator is closing in and, and starting to um, block me out. And I was like, this is the moment I'm going to do whatever it takes to mm-hmm. become who I want to be. I want to be beautiful. I want to be powerful. I want to have, a, I want to walk into the room and have people notice me, not for how I look, but for my presence. Yes. Confidence. I wanted to transform lives. I wanted to make it, I wanted to make a difference. Mm-hmm. And that's the moment I decided I would do everything under the sun to become that person. Mm. And so I began studying everything about transformation, girl, mm-hmm. <laughs> everything. And it started with how I looked. So I became a certified professional image consultant. So I studied body shapes, yes. style, how to accentuate the woman's face and body, how to mm-hmm. accentuate the most beautiful parts instead of focusing on what we hate. Right. Um, I learned about color and you know makeup and all that. And um, then I became a nationally certified personal trainer because I wanted to understand what the physical body goes through to undergo transformation. Mm-hmm. So I studied biology, physiology, nutrition, weight loss, working out. And I started to make this transformation on the outside. I started yeah. to take care of myself. I started to deem myself as someone as worthy to put on the right clothes that fit. <laughs> yes. And to go to the gym and work out. And then... Um, I, st- I took three years to study um, um, transformative life coach. I became mm-hmm. a certified transformative life coach where I began to understand how the mind and what you think impacts the results that you get in your life. Mm-hmm. And interestingly, this quest for transformation on the outside kept taking me deeper and deeper and deeper. Yes, inside. the person inside, the professional. Absolutely. Yes. Mm-hmm. It kept on taking me deeper and deeper inside. Mm-hmm. Into the world of spirituality and quantum physics and metaphysics and energy. And this is where I realized that everything we are seeking in the outside world, everything, whether it's better health, better relationships, more money, a thriving business, um, uh, recognition for whatever we're doing, all those things we are seeking on the outside they do not exist if they do not happen on the inside with your mind and your heart first. You got to preach, that, woman. Right? Mm-hmm. And that is the study of metaphysics, which is mm-hmm. beyond the physical. Mm-hmm. And what's beyond the physical, what we can see, touch, hear, smell, is what we are thinking and feeling in, in, the, in the world of the metaphysical. And I just became obsessed with, like, you know, how do we create transformation the fastest and the most easiest that we can. And I realized without even wanting to go there, did not want to go to this place, but eventually (laughs) this is where I ended up. It eventually became a search for the source of all things. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I learned that the source of all things is spirit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting that. I did not want that. I didn't want to go there. Come on now. I was trying to to block out anything that had to do with the G word for so many years because I had so much baggage around God and spirit. And, you know, if I, if I, if I'm a follower of God, then I have to do these certain things. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do any of those things. I just Mm -hmm. want to do something else. But uh, this, this quest just kept on taking me deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's where I found the source of all things, the source of our joy, the source of our abundance, the source of our health and yes. wealth, 
and anything, everything is God. <laughs> mm -hmm. The source of our power. Absolutely. Yes, the source of our power is not, it's a, it's a, it has nothing to do with what's, what's out there in, mm -hmm. in the physical world. Mm -hmm. And that is what I found to be what divine confidence is. And this is why I started the school, Divine Confidence, because now I'm dedicated, I've dedicated my career and my business to helping women create that same transformation. But divine confidence, what I've defined it to be is, is an unshakable faith in knowing who you are and what you're here to do, regardless of what's going on in the world outside of you. Mm. That means regardless of who the president is, regardless of a global pandemic, regardless of how much money is in your bank account, regardless of what's going on with your physical health, regardless of what everybody in the world is telling you that you need to do and say and be, regardless of all that, divine confidence has had this, that unshakable faith in knowing who you are and what you are here to do. And that comes from nothing else besides that relationship with spirit. Mm, you about to make me break out the maracas and you know my editor slash husband will be mad at that sound. <laughs> Listen, we could dance literally a, a love song, praise and worship in agreement with everything that you've said. And you know this is the first time I'm hearing your full story. Yeah. Um, and for those of you who are listening, you have zero idea how incredible this woman is, but if you follow her, you will learn out very, very quickly. So Kat, Kim, and I are in a same base incubator. Mm -hmm. And when I first came into contact with her, I was immediately pulled towards her because of the questions you were asking. They were bold, brave, amazing. You were like, I don't care about these seven, eight plus figure women in here, these men and all that. I got questions. Yeah. And you were asked these questions. It was almost like, and, and you know, uh, from a, a joint um, video conference that we were both in with other women, we were all like, we look forward to Kat's questions. <laughs> like you are a celebrity within our incubator who does not work in the incubator or any of that. Kat has her own own program in school but we're all you know coaches need to be coached as well trainers need training all that good stuff mm -hmm. and Kat was like a celebrity and just standing up really tall with hey I need clarity hey I have a question hey I'm confused hey why is this not working for me well why is that working this way why do I have to do this like you were <laughs> challenging and being moldable at the same time moldable and open to learning mm -hmm. that there was something more that you didn't know. And that to me makes a luminary. Someone who knows a lot, does a lot, is incredible in their own right, but is still moldable, coachable, and open to the possibilities that exist on the other side of the knowledge limitation that we have in our current knowing. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Thank you, you are so phenomenal on all the levels. Oh my God. So you have to tell me because you know, you and I will talk forever and you'll be like, Nikita, the next podcast is coming. So <laughs> <laughs> with your clients now, you know, how are they coming to you and sick? Cause I know you work with all different types of, of people. Mm -hmm. Are they coming and saying like, Hey, I have a confidence issue or are they coming through kind of a different door in the confidence is being unthreaded as you know kind of the seat yeah. of their issue i definitely it's definitely about confidence it's definitely about spirituality mm -hmm. i definitely um focus on people who are really seeking that relationship that deeper relationship with spirit and god yeah um and the more that i come out of the god closet mm -hmm. the more <laughs> <laughs> That's a closet I haven't heard before. Okay, I can I can rock with this closet. All right. Yeah, it's like the God. I call it the God closet or the prayer closet. You mm -hmm. know, I've been hiding there, but it's it's I would be doing my clients and my students a disservice if I did not share what is in my heart and what I know is the most important thing when it comes to transformation. If you don't have that relationship with spirit, and if you have baggage with God, guess what? That baggage is gonna express itself in all the different ways and all the myriad of ways in your life. And so now I, I'm not even afraid to say this now. If you got baggage with God, it's time to clean that shit up. It's time to clean that shit up. <laughs> You're like, let's get right, clean out yeah. the closet. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of people who who have um, 